everyone. Welcome to Wire to Wire, our December edition of the My Resource Show from the FanDuel Studios here in Los Angeles. I'm Christina Blacker, joined by the Sarge Nick Hines. As per usual, Sarge, I can't believe we've already hit the end of the year here. No, it's been a remarkable year. I mean, uh, 2022 uh, has gone by so quickly. I guess they say uh, time flies when you're having fun, right? right. Uh, and here we are uh, in December of 2022. What an amazing year it has been uh, for uh, Team My Racehorse and Edge included. We're going to talk a lot about uh, the My Race Horse Horses, the Edge Horses, but just reflecting on the year in general, I think you have to go back to what we saw from Flightline. You have to consider the huge upset in the Kentucky Derby with Rich Strike. We had some real exciting moments on the racetrack in the sport that we all know and love. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that you can, you know, kind of reflect on, on different aspects of the year and, and, and the ride that uh, Flightline had taken us on. But, you know, I think reflecting upon the Kentucky Derby, uh, when you look at a horse like Rich Strike and, you know, I think of Edge racing and the fact that in due time was uh, essentially would have been a starter had it not been uh, for injury. In fact, he was uh, a slot ahead of Rich Strike. But it just goes to show you that uh, in this game, it's good to be in the right place at the right time. But anybody has a chance. And, uh, you know, you know, the old saying, the underdog uh, given that opportunity, Rich Strike truly, you know, probably the story of the year as far as the moment of the year uh, for me. Just as a racing fan, flight line, you know, Breeders' Cup Classic. I think that really puts it all into perspective. So many stories kind of woven through each other throughout the year here in 2022. And I think you see that kind of thread of my resource through each and every one of them. We hope you've had some great moments, whether you're there as a fan or out there as an owner at the racetrack. We want to take a look back at some of the more exciting races, winners, horses throughout this show here in December. But let's start first with the stable statistics. It's been a great year for my racehorse. And one thing that really struck me in taking a look at these numbers is just the volume of horses that the stable has going right now. Uh, over 200 starters this year, Sarge. We had quite a few of these winners hitting at that 20%. You gotta love that because that's really the benchmark of success across any panel in horse racing, whether you're a trainer, whether you're a jockey, whether you're an owner, if you're able to stay hovering around that 20%, you've had a good year. Oh, it's been incredible. Uh, it certainly has. And in earnings from wins alone, over 2.2 uh, 2 million. You know, the, the fact that uh, we have a stable now that it consists of 13 different trainers, uh, extremely diverse uh, from tip to tail. And, and I think credit goes to the uh, entire uh, My Racehorse team. Of course, during the year, uh, Harry Rice, for example, uh, in the East, uh, Page doing a wonderful job in the Midwest, along with uh, McKenzie and uh, Abby Huffman, uh, who had stepped in and done such a wonderful job. Joe Moran mm -hmm. out here on the left coast uh, in, in Southern California. And across the board, it has been a uh, concerted effort to Roderick Walkman, another one, uh, our uh, global acquisitions uh, chief, and Joe Mishak, of course, racing and operations manager. So it's been a concerted effort. Uh, look, our anticipation, our goal was to get to 50. Um, we came up a little <laughs> bit short, but hey, 20%, not too shabby, and having eight stakes wins and some tremendous highlights along the way. Well, think of all the seconds and thirds, too. You know, you're right there in so many of those photos. Yeah. A few of those photos go one way or the other. And uh, you jump up in all statistics. Every month we go back and we relive a lot of these winners. It never gets old. Let's do it again. Here are some of the highlights and the winners from 2022 with My Racehorse. Take a look. Duke of Love sticks ahead in front of Ironstone as they race down the stretch. It is Duke of Love and Justin Stein. Ironstone tries to fight back along the inside and fast feet and nice road rally from the back. But as we come into the final of a final 16th of a mile, Duke of Love has taken control. It's a triumphant victory for Duke of Love. There's an eighth to go and going to Vegas, digging in gamely. Maintains a two length lead. Fluffy socks flattening out. Scarabale on the inside and Bellamore. Late run from Family Way. Going to Vegas all the way. Coming to the 16th, Forbidden Kingdom still strong. Pinehurst two and a half behind. 16th pole and it's Forbidden Kingdom all the way. A powerful effort. Dominant in the San Vicente under Juan Hernandez. It is Forbidden Kingdom. A stellar display. Six length lead past the 16th pole. And what a performance from Forbidden Kingdom under Juan Hernandez in the San Felipe. Quarter of a mile remaining. Nitrous Channel on the inside fights to hold it. Provocateur right up alongside. 
and now Provocateur sticks the neck in front. Nitrous Channel flat to the boards, trying to get back on terms, but Provocateur is getting away. Provocateur and Jockey Irat Ortiz Jr. win the Hutchison by two in the end. Top of the stretch and Provocateur opens up two lengths. Lightning Larry trying to re-rally inside speaking and here's Witty. Witty on the outside closing. Provocateur, a three length read and running strongly through the stretch. It's going to be Provocateur, a decisive winner of the Jersey Shore. Laneway is coming through. Air Force Red on the far outside. Gregorian Chant has four and a half to make up in the final eighth of a mile. What makes Sammy run? Gregorian Chant is starting to close stylishly. Laneway running a big race on the inside, but what makes Sammy run is going to get it. What makes Sammy run? And Joe Bravo to win the Eddie D. 63 caliber in behind, take a stand, dives to the rail, 16th pole, Falconet is still there. Here comes 63 caliber, final lunge late to get there. 63 caliber. It is 63 caliber who has the lead with an eighth of a mile to the finish. Kathleeno now moving up, but it is 63 caliber who has the lead. Kathleeno continues the game, a 16th to the finish. 63 caliber trying to hold off Kathleeno. They come on for the finish in the come lane. 63 caliber by a neck. <laughs> Here's to 63 calibers winning the grade three Conley. Onward and upward, my race horse and 63 caliber. Cheers to that. We will toast to 63 Caliber as well. More on her in just a second. Sarge, I feel like if I ask you for your favorite, it's like asking you to prefer between your children. It's almost not fair to say who do you like the most or which win did you like the most. But were any of them especially satisfying for you for any reason or another? Well, I, again, I, I think Forbidden Kingdom for me personally, uh, you know, a horse that, uh, you know, unfortunately didn't have the opportunity to dance the first Saturday in May, but he certainly will the day after Christmas, and we'll touch on that uh, in a bit. But in regard to a particular individual that overcame uh, adversity. And I think that really, uh, there was kind of a theme that, that I've always kind of lived by uh, as a former trainer, patience, perseverance, persistence. And I think it uh, comes to one particular individual in 63 caliber, and uh, she has become essentially the poster child, if you will, near and dear to the heart of our CEO and founder. This goes back to when, and prior to when, prior to ever, when she ever raced, uh, knowing that she had uh, an issue uh, with her throat, uh, she'd had throat surgery, for her to have uh, gone on and, and done what she's done thus far with an exciting year ahead, I think it's a tremendous uh, tribute to uh, that patient's uh, perseverance and persistency and, and mad credit going out to trainer Tom Amos. So for me, uh, 63 caliber, Forbidden Kingdom, uh, for multiple reasons. We have more on 63 Caliber right now, actually. The daughter of Gunrunner, five for seven this year. You saw that toast in the highlight with the grade three Comely as she closed out her season in 2022 as now a graded stakes winner. Tommy Miss is her trainer. He's always been so wonderful with the owners, with his communication, and with his work in television. He does such a great job just explaining what goes on in the barn each and every day. Earlier this week, Nick had a chance to catch up with Tom and reflect on the year that was for 63 Caliber. Day, everyone, and happy holidays. Nick Hines with you on uh, a glorious December day. Happy to be joined uh, by our good friend and trainer, Tom Amos. And what an incredible year it has been and uh, a journey with uh, 63 Caliber, who has now uh, amassed in excess of 260,000, five-time winning daughter of Gunrunner, coming off of that uh, big victory in the grade three uh, comely. Uh, jo uh, Tom, joining us today, of course, a pleasure. I know that uh, you've been traveling and very uh, tricky time of year as far as getting place to place, but uh, thanks for coming on board. Uh, it's my pleasure. You know, it's it's kind of hard for me to put the superlatives for what this uh, journey has uh, brought to us in regards to 63 caliber, but for us here at uh, My Racehorse, we, uh, we've been blessed, you know, not only by, by your talents, but by your uh, diligence uh, as a trainer to kind of bring her along as you have. And if, if we were to have a year-end award for, say, for example, a, a most valuable player in uh, equine athlete, or say, for example, comeback story of the year and or horse of most, most popularity, it would certainly be a 63 caliber. But uh, again, we're very appreciative of the uh, relationship that we've had with you. And, um, you know, kind of maybe talk to us about the journey with 63 caliber, who was able to kind of come back from that uh, that throat surgery earlier on and uh, where we stand today. 
I'm smiling because I'm looking at the winner's circle from Churchill Downs, uh, where she uh, won her race previous to the grade three comely. Uh, that was a big deal uh, that day. So, um, you know, patience is certainly a virtue in just about anything that you do. And racehorses uh, demand patience. And if you're not patient with them, uh, and you get in a hurry, um, they make you be patient. And usually that means time off and things like that. So we started, uh, as you referred to it as a journey, Nick, um, our first race was back, I believe, at the fairgrounds last year, a six furlong maiden allowance race for 63 caliber. And, you know, those first starts for horses are often like uh, why the NFL has preseason football games. You're, you're learning about your team. You're learning about what they do well, what they need to do better before the season starts. We don't have a preseason with horses. So oftentimes that first right. start for our thoroughbreds uh, is a chance to learn what they need to do better and what they need to work on uh, to make them successful. And you can pick up clues from that uh, in that first start. And, and keep in mind that when you get in the gate with a bunch of other horses in the afternoon or in the evening, depending upon where you race, uh, for the first time, you're – athlete is experiencing something that you cannot emulate in practice. So, you know, oftentimes we go to the gate with a horse and work from the gate, maybe one, maybe two other horses, but nothing like a race and nothing like where you go to the paddock and, and, and saddle with the other horses and then warm up on the racetrack with a lot of other horses on the track and then get in the gate with 10 to 12 horses and get crowded and boxed around. And, and, and so again, you learn a lot about your athlete. And um, one of the things that I remember distinctly about 63 caliber after that race was the wake up she had uh, after that race in training and, and how much more uh, she seemed to understand what her job was after that. She'd always trained well. She loves getting out on the racetrack and exercising, but, but there was a new kind of uh, uh, mindset uh, that she had after that first start uh, at the fairgrounds that really led us to believe that, that she had advanced quite a bit from the learning experience of that first race. And she showed it in her next start. Uh, I mentioned all those things because, um, again, referring to the word you used, it's a journey. Uh, C3 Caliber um, was a horse that incrementally went along and was in better spots and tried to put her in spots, we did as a team, uh, where she could learn and advance. So leading into those last two races, and obviously the comely was the cherry on the cake. Special thanks to Tom Amos for taking the time. We know it's busy, of course, end of the year. Horses transitioning to different jurisdictions as they get ready for the winter and the holidays as well. Congrats again to all the partners, all the owners, and all the fans of 63 Caliber on a great year in 2022. Edge Racing, we want to reflect on some of their success as well. And we might have some new viewers this month, Sarge. Just for anybody that's unfamiliar, what's the progression, what's the step from my racehorse into Edge? Oh, it's pretty natural. It's, it's essentially the perfect segue if you will, uh, must, of course, be an accredited investor to, to get involved uh, with Edge Racing. Uh, Joe Moran, uh, racing manager, of course, he's the West Coast liaison for uh, my racehorse as well, and uh, I will advise with him. Uh, and it's, again, pretty seamless. I, I think it's just a matter of you wanting to step your game up uh, in regards to become a microshare owner to an accredited investor being involved with uh, Edge Racing. And, you know, again, we've had some uh, great stories of, of owners who have actually gone on, who have invested through my racehorse onto Edge, who have actually graduated to their own ownership groups and syndicates. So, um, again, it's a wonderful thing. And, again, the bottom line for us has been the transparency and the communication. And I can't say enough for my racehorse. As much as we've evolved, now I think we've got to 25,000 partners. Uh, at the end of the day, a uh, great group uh, of individuals, and uh, some have gone on to be a big part of what Edge has uh, accomplished. Let's take a look at those numbers, if we can. Edge racing out there on the racetrack. And I think this was something that was really born from the demand, from the excitement, from the My Racehorse shareholders wanting more, wanting a bigger step and a bigger foothold into the game. 66 starters for Edge racing, 11 wins, 17% win percentage, and a 50% 
in the money percentage. And you're talking about these Saturday, Sunday horses, too. Horses that you're looking forward to running on the weekends in the biggest races. Oh, yeah. No joke. As I mentioned, the fact that uh, in due time, uh, in a partnership with uh, Parkland uh, Medallion, they stepped in off of a huge effort to, in the grade two uh, Fountain of Youth. And he was derby qualified. He was in the Kentucky Derby. Unfortunately, uh, came with uh, an issue uh, coming out of the Lexington. He's on the uh, comeback trail. As you can see, as far as the top performances are concerned, in due time, son of uh, not this time, Tepu by Tappet to uh, making his return for Brendan Walsh escape route. Uh, he's been kind of the signature item to begin with. Uh, he was the first horse that uh, Edge had acquired via the claim box. Been a great success story and spun intended uh, coming out of a, a maiden special weight victory at Del Mar. He's on the Derby list. Uh, he clicked down to 50 to 1 on the Derby Futures in Las Vegas. So that puts uh, Spun Intended into a perspective. And in a partnership with Mura, that's the other point, Christina, about Edge. You know, we partnered uh, with others uh, right. on the outside, Muir Hut uh, being one of which Sean's been great for us. And from a trainer perspective, extremely diverse. And uh, rolling into today, I believe Edge has won four in a row, from what I could recall. I believe we've got six trainers. It's worked out uh, brilliantly to this point. Let's take a co closer look at Spun Intended. You always get excited as we turn the year, and these two-year-olds are turning three. We can start talking about that first Saturday in May. Here is the maiden special weight victory from the 26th of November. Big victory this afternoon from Spun Intended, who really just put this field away with such ease. Hall of Famer Mike Smith was in the saddle on Spun Intended, and we had the chance to catch up with him with all that adrenaline pumping after a big win. Take a look. The ultra impressive here, uh, the effort we were hoping for, but just give us your thoughts real quick. I mean, we, look, we all knew going in, even the first time that we had talent. He's a big colt, he's growing, he's learning. He ran really well the first time. And he ran the kind of race that you were hoping you'd see something like, like you just saw just now uh, today. So he didn't disappoint. There was a lot of, a lot of gas left in the tank, and I, I'm just really excited about him. I think down the road, good Lord's willing, we stay healthy. He could be a horse we could have a whole lot of fun with. Mike, thanks for the time, and congrats once more to the owners of Spun Intended. It was a breakthrough performance, I guess you could say. Oh, absolutely it was, and I think the sky's the limit. You know, he's a big, strapping son of a hard Spun, uh, you know, weighing in excess and right at about 1,100 pounds. So uh, when he was acquisitioned as a two-year-old in training, um, you know, he, he turned out to be quite a bit of a bargain. When you look back, the fact that uh, he was a kind of a post-sale purchase for 125000 but uh, Mike Smith had been aboard in the mornings. Uh, Mark Glatt's done a a, a wonderful job, not only uh, for Edge, uh, of course, a longtime friend and former trainer for Joe's father, uh, Michael uh, Moran, but in regard to what he's done with my racehorse, we see hero status and what he's been able to do on the racetrack. So nice development for Spun Intended. He'll go postward in the sham next month at Santa Anita, hoping that uh, the Derby dream can continue for a horse that uh, he's been pretty active as far as Derby future book bets. I know I've got mine in a row. <laughs> Another horse here, Asadis, you mentioned that, you know, the patience paid off. And to your point about patience, about persistence, about never giving up with these horses, we had some real breakthrough performances, horses that always had that talent that just put it all together in a big way and are encouraging in terms of what is to come. Let's take a look now at those breakthrough runners from 2022. Engine and Tim Thornton, they've got a big lead. Nobody's getting to him. Classy Shipman is in second. In third is Mr. Because, but it's all wrapped up. It's Search Engine, the favorite in race number five. Carruthers has the lead and he has a kick. He gets away from Lorenz. Sick run, fast boy down the stand side. Journeyman at the rail. Less than an eighth of a mile to go and Carruthers is finding. Lorenz is trying to go get him, but Carruthers has too much in reserve. And Carruthers and Jackie Jr. Alvarado win by two in the end. Mike Rocher opens up two. Brocade back to second, followed by Sweet Talked in third, and then Chloe's Girl. Mike Rocher opening up with every stride. It's a five length lead past the 16th pole, and Mike Rocher will make short work of the competition. Geared down, cruising to victory. Mike Rocher, a four and a half length winner. Tap the gavels, taking the lead. Splendid summer fights on for Lee is chasing King Tsunami from the back. Here comes Rock the Stars and also American Day as they're approaching the final furlong and it's Tap the Gavel just widening here down towards the inside. American Day is flying inside the final 16th. Tap the Gavel, American Day. Tap the Gavel gets the victory. 
I think sometimes with those breakthrough runners, the victory feels that much sweeter because you've kind of been through the ups and downs, right? And with my racehorse, you've been right there for every step of the journey, and you really feel such a sense of accomplishment when they do put it all together. Oh, absolutely. And I, I think that just, uh, you know, for the sake of let's look at tap the gavel, uh, you know, been previously trained by a Hall of Fame trainer. Things just didn't quite quite match up and, and things weren't working out. Uh, Kent Sweezy, uh, you know, saw some things that uh, he felt that he could individualize and ultimately uh, made a difference. Uh, Kent Sweezy also took over the training on uh, Carruthers. Uh, kind of a change uh, in venue and was able to go on and win a couple of races. Now, granted, it didn't work out to the expectation upon Carruthers being purchased, but uh, you save a little face, right? Yeah. And as far as you say breakthrough, I think broke the ice on a few. For example, a microshare who makes uh, a return in a partnership with the Spendthrift. I'm super excited to see what 2023 has to bring. But uh, again, props to Tom Amos as well with Search Engine, uh, also training 63 caliber. And uh, hopefully uh, Search Engine will, will prove his uh, worth in getting back into some stakes company in 2023. Those are the breakthrough performances of 2022. We also have some runners to look forward to for 2023 that have shown a lot of promise, horses that uh, we're really excited about as we turn the calendar year to the new year. So let's take a look at some of these young runners and some of these new acquisitions for the stable, those promising runners to look ahead to for next year. They come for home now, and it's straight. No chaser finding more sticks. His neck out goes gamely for the right line. Pella Grosso coming on the inside to spite her on the outside, and Vervey has come from far back. But straight, no chaser just plain too good. Straight, no chaser wins well. Man among men in the orange cap comes to take them on as well, and then comes Naismith wide open as they come for home along the inside quintessence. Dancing Sitka on the outside and man among men coming between them, coming for home quintessence. Man among men, man among men quintessence. Man among men gets up. Hero status pins his ears and comes determinedly for the wire. In code tries to battle back. Peligio flattened out in the end and it's all hero status now. He's taken the lead and from here on in it's just a matter of how far. You got your money on hero status, you can ring up the register. He's one for fun. Rosie's alibi is kicked on. It's Rosie's alibi. Por una cabeza for a final furlong. Foggy Knight's taken third. Rosie's alibi is opening up here in the stretch inside the final 16th. It is all Rosie's alibi in the My Racehorse Silks. Arad Ortiz Jr., they win. I love seeing all the celebrations. I also love not only the the excitement at the racetrack, and of course you want to win, but all the friendships that are created through my racehorse. So many people that have found folks that have obviously so much in common with them, and mm -hmm. now these new relationships that they have. It's pretty remarkable, and you know, obviously being involved in, in the Facebook world, you know, the Facebook groups for the certain individual horses, and it for me, I, I love to hear the opinions. You know, obviously when it comes to a horse, and as far as their development, uh, first and foremost, these partners that are involved, it's a process. But the one thing that I can take from it, uh, regardless of whether you win or lose, at the end of the day, as long as these horses come back safely, soundly, and are able to compete another day, uh, the uh, partners. For big groups, I have to say the synergy mm -hmm. has been extremely positive. As mentioned, you've got over 25,000 partners uh, in general. And again, to our, our horsemen's liaisons, the managers from coast to coast, they've done a great job. But ultimately, the trainers. For example, Rosie's Alibi, Hall of Fame trainer Todd Pletcher, it's just been kind of overwhelming, right? But uh, they've been so accommodating. We've been very blessed. Richard Mandela uh, comes to mind here, of course, on the West Coast. We mentioned Kent Sweezy, who jumped uh, into the mix uh, over the past year. So, uh, it again, it is a process, and uh, we are thankful uh, on behalf of all of us at uh, My Racehorse to you, the partner, and the fact that uh, you've been patient with us as well, because by no means... Is anyone in this program perfect? <laughs> but that's the wonderful thing about horse racing. It's 365 days a year, but uh, we do our best to make it right. We win together, we lose together, but at least we are together, right? Let's take a look at a few more stats and highlights that we have from this year, just to remind you of some of the horses and the events that we had to enjoy together. Over 75 events, including mm. the race days, 
the Ocala Showcase, which was something that had never been done. I love that model. Love taking people up close with those horses before they even make it to their trainers at the racetrack, to the farms in Lexington, to Saratoga, the Del Mar experiences, those My Race Horse lounges, and how about this, a fourth consecutive appearance in the Breeders' Cup, My Race Horse being there on racing's biggest stage. Well, it's crazy to think. I mean, it's not as if My Race Horse has been around for 10 years. Right. I mean, we're we're kind of in, a, in the, kind of, I believe, right in the fifth year, sixth year-ish. But uh, yeah, absolutely, and mentioning the diverse aspect of it, but take a look. Between My Race Horse Edge, Horses on the Triple Crown Trail, uh, that's a, a pretty phenomenal stat uh, in its own right. You had four, over 30,000 My Race Horse part, I think I was quoted as 25,000, but who's counting at that rate? <laughs> and then 13 different trainers, one with a My Race Horse racehorse. So at the end of the day, I think that really speaks volumes uh, to the program and uh, you know hopefully for you the partner or for those that are maybe just clicking in to the wire to wire show you too could have an opportunity to come along for the ride here at uh, myracehorse.com lots more to look forward to here on the show we're going to transition now to talk about one of our owners that i know you had a chance to get up and close and personal with earlier this week mark sedrin has been a longtime supporter of my racehorse he's uh, had some real successes on the racetrack himself with the horses that he's bought into, the horses that he has been in support of, and he's just become a real ambassador for the program in general. If you haven't had the chance to meet him, now is the opportunity to get to know Mark Sedrin a little bit more. A good day and a happy holidays to you all, Nick Hines. Uh, I am here along with uh, one of the true great ambassadors for uh, my racehorse and uh, happy to call him a friend, Mark Sedrin, uh, to this edition on our Wire to Wire segment. And uh, truly, it has been a tremendous year for us here at Wire to Wire and, uh, you know, offering up these owner spotlights. But Mark, it is uh, truly a pleasure to have you, a retired lieutenant and member of the NYPD counterterrorism team. Um, I can't say enough because I've seen pictures of you all over as far as winter circle is concerned, but uh, you've been a major component of uh, the My Racehorse ownership group. I've been getting around. It's been well, great. It's been a blast. Well, it, it, it's great to have you and you're in the festive spirit. Uh, and it, it, it's great to see there in New York and imagine it's uh, quite festive once you uh, look out uh, your window. But uh, we wanted to ask you, uh, you know, before we get into your uh, my racehorse experience, uh, what uh, what hooked you on racing? Uh, what was kind well, of what got you involved to to begin with? My my dad owned Standard Birds uh, before I was born, and uh, I guess after I was born, he realized there's some responsibilities come with fatherhood. So uh, he stopped owning, but he was always interested. I mean, he was always you know we'd always go to the track. We lived maybe 15 minutes from Yonkers Raceway, so we'd go to Yonkers, we'd go to Roosevelt. Um, once in a while, we'd go up to Montes all the way up to Monticello, and uh, he used to bring me to the, the the sales, and we would just hang out. And I was always hoping he'd buy another horse while I was, you know, while I was alive. But uh, you know, uh, he never did. Um, but he was always into it. We'd always go to some of the big races, the Belmont and stuff like that. And uh, you know, weekends at the track with them, and you know, that's what got me into it. Um, after a while. Um, you know, I wasn't following it as closely over the years, but I'd still go to the big, I brought, bring my kids to the Belmont. We saw American Pharaoh win the triple crown, which was terrific. Right. Uh, great experience. The kids had a great time. And uh, so that's what, that's, that's how I started getting into it. It was really, it was mostly, mostly standard breads, but I was also, I almost, I actually almost followed the track, you know, to, to go into the business. But, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't go that way. I went a different route and became a police officer instead. Uh, we, we, we thank you for your service uh, on all fronts. And, you know, this, this country is uh, the most wonderful place to have individuals as yourself, uh, of course, uh, dedicating uh, your lives and careers to that. Uh, prior to my racehorse, uh, had you owned horses before? Uh, no, I never had. Uh, in fact, I, I wasn't even following it as closely uh, anymore until, well, I did see an ad for, for uh, Authentic. And wow. well, as the story goes, uh, I, my, it was my wife's birthday and coming up. And uh, when you're together that long, you just don't know what to get each other anymore. You run out of ideas. So I saw <laughs> this, this an advertisement for my racehorse and authentic and, you know, trained by Bob Baffert, um, won the Haskell, going to be entered into the Kentucky Derby, 
seemed like a no brainer. Uh, my, my wife isn't as passionate as I am about horse racing. So it was really kind of a gift you want for yourself, but you buy for your wife, you know? And uh, when I gave it to her, I don't think she was that excited to be honest with you. You know, it, it's just not her thing. It's, right. It was, you know, something I really wanted for myself, but, uh, you know, we know the story ended. Uh, he went on to win the Kentucky Derby, and it was pretty exciting. And I think she likes the bragging rights now as well. Oh, absolutely. I I, I don't know how my wife would feel if I actually gave her a, a My Racehorse gift card for Christmas because <laughs> she knows along with the horses come the bills. But, uh, yeah. you know, I, I think, you know, we had an interview uh, earlier today with a trainer, Tom Amos, and we'll get to that in a moment, of course, with 63 caliber because she is a part of your stable. Um, but he alluded to a Super Bowl trophy being handed around uh, his brother as a team doctor for the New Orleans Saints, you know, and, and kind of the, the chills kind of went up my spine thinking, wow, Super Bowl horse. For me personally, horse racing is uh, far and away the best sport there is. And uh, having this interaction with these uh, tremendous athletes uh, is, is truly a blessing. So at the point in which authentic came along is when you got involved with my racehorse. And that was an incredible way to start. And as far as the stable and where you're at today, obviously you must know a thing or two about picking out uh, good runners, Mark. I just buy them all. I think <laughs> I, 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 after, after authentic one, I, I got such FOMO that I just pretty much as they come along, I just keep buying them. Mark, thank you so much for the time and, of course, for all of your efforts and just for the passion, the excitement that you have for my racehorse. He's also got a great setup there as far as his Zoom for your interview. I mean, that, like, I, I needed some help with my at-home setup in the years past. He had it dialed in with the tree, the yeah. stockings, everything. He's certainly uh, in, the, in the festive uh, moment yeah. there. But, uh, you know, Mark, he's been great uh, as far as the partnerships uh, and getting the, the owners together. You saw in the uh, clip for 63 Caliber in the Comley, he was the one uh, with the celebratory uh, champagne uh, after. But, you know, Mark uh, going to do a little more uh, work for us up in New York as far as, you know, getting owners together for our events in, in racing there uh, in New York. So, uh, Mark, can't, can't say enough and appreciate uh, you coming on board here and, uh, you know, sharing your story. Uh, he's been pretty darn lucky. Uh, the first horse that he invested in, you'll hear, obviously, the story about he and Authentic, how he gave uh, it to his wife as a present. Um, she was a little taken aback at first. He said he's still not quite sure, but uh, Mark's truly one of the good guys. And I think he epitomizes and represents what ownership is here with uh, my racehorse and the fact that you can come from all uh, facets of life and uh, take on that uh, dream of owning a racehorse. And Mark's uh, truly one of the good guys. You touched a little bit on the Phillies in the sales rings. We talked about this a lot on the November show. Of course, you think about that Phasic Tipton, Night of the Stars, the Keeneland November breeding stock sale. This was another point and a highlight of success for the year for my racehorse. Yeah, I, I think the, the, the real... I think bottom line here is that as much as we look for profitability uh, when purchasing and uh, in the shape of Amore and Dolce Note purchased uh, as uh, yearlings, but uh, the fact that uh, going to Vegas is profitable, Amore returns same value uh, as her original purchase price, and Dolce Note and Full to Authentic sold for a slight gross profit. So, you know, not only the success, success is measured. Uh, in wins and losses, right? But to have profitability and being able to essentially have that memory, Amore was uh, Amore was successful on the racetrack. But to going to Vegas, you know, having won the uh, Rodeo in successive seasons, uh, winning Grade One multiple. Uh, credit going out to the train. I'm happy she has gone out with a bang, but I loved her. I was sad to she see her go from the yeah. racetrack because she was so determined in all of her races. And with all of the partnerships coming together, those were some of the most lively winter circle photos of the year. No matter where yeah. you were, I don't care where you're racing globally, those were some of the best celebrations we've seen. Uh, my racehorse, Abadanza, Bing Bush, Medallion, uh, Phil Shelton. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. But again, credit to the trainers. Uh, Richard Baltus, of course, that had going to Vegas initially. He wants cleaner for $50,000, so that's a feather in his cap. And then Phil Diamato, a salute to you, sir. Todd Pletcher mentioned uh, the work that he has done. Uh, great trainers, wonderful horsemen, and uh, certainly uh, easy to deal with. I think that for me has been uh, one of the most satisfactory um, things for me as a, a former trainer and you know sitting down with with Michael Barons and Joe Mishak once upon a time in that 
tiny office there in Claremont with the idea of we want to try and introduce the big trainer, the Hall of Fame type trainers into this scenario. How do you think they're going to handle all of these partners? But quite honestly, I think it's been wonderful, and I think that they've been very understanding of the concept that we're trying to institute a new breed of ownership and also kind of educate those uh, along the way. And you've seen throughout uh, the year on Wire to Wire, we've had Dr. Burke come in and uh, offer up uh, his knowledge and insight uh, with, with vetting and, and the process. Dr. Bramlage, uh, for example, there are so many elements uh, to this game and industry. And, you know, we're just thankful, but uh, not to go off on a tangent, but success in the sales ring is always a good thing at the end of the day, Christina. Embracing the real model of the future, and you're seeing my resource take that globally uh, as well. That's something definitely to look forward to in 2023. We talk every month about aftercare, about where these horses go when their racing careers are over. They don't all go through the sales rings. They don't all become stallions. But let's take a look back at some of the highlights, some of those horses that have transitioned into their new careers very successfully. Mo Mischief is one that I know we've talked about quite a bit throughout these last couple of months. Uh, he is now retired and rehomed with Lee McPartland in Virginia. Oh, look at him, loving the life out there and enjoying a little splash through the local lake. Mo Mischief, thanks to the McPartlands for giving him a second home. Daddy's Joy is another horse. Uh, she's in Ocala, Florida with the Leptons. She's one that, from what I understand, Sarge has a real kind of frame and physique on herself. She might end up as a hunter or jumper in the future. Now, one thing about her, which is remarkable, I mean, we, we often look for the pause uh, in racing to, to give them a little bit of a break, but she was a bit of a throwback. Uh, you know, she was one of the original two-year-old purchase and training that we had had. Uh, she was very racing sound. She was in a partnership with uh, Slam Dunk Racing. Uh, kudos going out to Nick and, of course, his racing manager and son, uh, Ryan Casado. But for me to see Mo Mischief, uh, you know, Kerry Brogdon, so instrumental, uh, Tristan Demerick, Demerick, so they've been wonderful. Uh, along the way to see Mo Mischief uh, in that stream doing what he does uh, certainly uh, can kind of get you caught up uh, in some emotional tears because he was a big two-year-old in training purchase uh, at one point in his career again in a partnership with, with Spendthrift but I think this really kind of brings back uh, to mind what uh, Michael Barron's wanted to uh, convey with these horses, that they truly are the bottom line, and it's our job, and that's our mission statement, to make sure that these horses get a, a soft landing, and as you can uh, surmise by the list. And again, credit going out to uh, Abby Huffman, who was instrumental with Solar Strike, uh, another horse who was a misfit of sorts. And oh, my gosh. He was a She's kind of patient, a, I'll tell you what. <laughs> and, and, you know, from the, from the very first time in which the Solar Strike kind of came into the program, you knew he had kind of a wild eye, but... Credit to uh, each and every one of those individuals who have taken them on. Big Mel, uh, great to see. Wayne O, another horse that, uh, of course, has gone on to uh, the uh, the new uh, life. Uh, and, of course, you see new vocations uh, being a big part of it uh, here with uh, Big Mel. I love this picture. Yeah, Power Up Painter, Look Who Got Lucky, Big Mel, all part of the new vocations program. Uh, amongst others, they have been adopted and are living with their new and forever home. So good luck to them. Look who got lucky, made his way out to South Carolina or North Carolina, I understand. Not bad. Power up painter, just out there being a horse and being able to transition to his next discipline. Good luck to all of those who have gone ahead and adopted these horses, not only for my racehorse, but just throughout the entire year. Uh, if you've worked with your local program there. We applaud you and we thank you for that and for your help for all of us in horse racing. Let's take one more look at what's coming up in terms of runners on the racetrack that we have to look forward to. We've kind of talked about this a little bit with Spun Intended, with some other horses that are targeted for races through the end of this year and into 2023. Of course, the championship meets begin at both Gulfstream and also at Santa Anita. So there will be some big races ahead and really right after Christmas, Boxing Day, the 26th, is when it all gets started. Yeah, and it's uh, going to be an exciting one, of course, the day after Christmas opening day at the Great Race Place. Uh, your husband, who's done such a great job with Straight No Chaser, and, you know, he took it upon himself to say the idea, the goal is to train him up to the Malibu, which this horse has been training forwardly. You know, and despite uh, the disappointing effort to back, Dan was quick to say there were some things that just weren't quite where they needed to be. 
Big performance last out straight. No chaser, his son of Spikester, uh, going to step into the ring with Forbidden Kingdom. <laughs> it's going to turn out to be an exciting day. I hope that you can make it out to uh, Santa Anita, Arcadia, California, the great race place. Uh, opening day at uh, that racetrack is truly one of the most storied and one of the best. But to have an opportunity for the final three-year-old uh, grade one opportunity with having two horses uh, in the starting gate, been kingdom in a partnership with Spendthrift, straight no chaser, has been a success story in his own right. Yeah, we get to talk now about what we're looking forward to in 2023. It's easy for me to say, as Straight No Chaser is definitely the horse that I'm most looking forward to. That my husband Dan trains, and uh, fingers crossed for the Malibu. That'll be an exciting day as we begin at Santa Anita. I also love Man Among Men. I don't know what it is about him. I've always kind of felt a, a real kind of attraction to this horse. He's got that big, beautiful stride. You saw it in our Promising Runners montage just a little while ago. He was bred by Jane Lyon in Summerwind Farm, who, of course, spread the mighty flight line. She takes a lot of pride in her broodmare band and in just raising good horses. She names them before they go through the ring. Man Among Men is another one, Sarge, that I'm very excited about. How about you? Well, I, I tell you, you, you're most definitely on the right track. I know that uh, uh, Richard Mandela, you know, indicated to uh, Joe Moran that looking into 2023, Man Among Men, one of those horses that's uh, certainly going to be all right. For me, I'm excited about Val. Uh, she took on a trainer uh, change. Uh, Steve Aspison uh, took on the training this daughter of uh, Union Rags, coming in off of a sharp uh, runner-up effort last out. To, you know, she's been a horse that, in much like we've seen with a number of these, that, kind of had to iron the wrinkles out. And I think part of it was just she wasn't able to really put forth at, say, for example, as a two-year-old, transitioning uh, into 2023. I think Val, aptly named out of the Mayor Diamond Ring, I'm excited about her, and I think that she is certainly kind of along the tones. I'm not making a prediction, but along the tone and uh, lanes of 63 caliber. She has that same vibe for me. Looking forward to those ones. We know you have some favorites out there as well. Be sure to let us know. Comment on social media. Let us know who you are most looking forward to seeing in 2023. Have you finished your holiday shopping? Uh, you, you ready? Know, I'm a last minute shopper. You know, I, this and is I, Sarge. You got the gift for her Saint, all ready to go. Saint Nick. Yeah. Well, <laughs> my, my wife, she, uh, you know, lately she's been kind of like, well, let's just go shopping together. So apparently ah, I kind of lost my touch, Christina. So I let her choose and pick and choose. Uh, of course, cash. He's all set up for Christmas. It's How about not you? too late to get something from the My Racehorse store. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm sort of ready. I, I yeah, I, I think I've got it done. I don't know. Fingers crossed. We'll see. Hopefully. People aren't returning the gifts I got. But if you are getting one of these presents from the My Race Horse merchandise shop, we know you'll be happy. There are 29 new horse collections added to the shop. So uh, these are pieces that are tailor-made to the horses that you own and love. Customizable love owner photos and then everyday gifts for your horse enthusiasts. You can also just get a gift card. If you have a friend out there that you think might enjoy being a part of My Race Horse, give them the gift of a share of a horse. You think of the story with our owner spotlight with, with Mark Sedron. I mean, that that's how the, the dream began uh, with Authentic, uh, in a sense that he felt that he wanted to do something a little different. Of course, his father had gone and taken him to the harness tracks uh, when he was a youngster, but the gift cards, you have no idea. I've got friends that I grew up with in Las Vegas that I still stay in contact with, and they always said to me, ah, I couldn't afford to own a racehorse. Those gift cards, uh, they are now finally stepping into the uh, arena of horse ownership by way of uh, my racehorse and really excited about that but you're right the gift cards I'm are not kidding I gave easier. one to Mrs. Nelson our preschool teacher last year because right? her brothers were already involved you're right and now she every time we walk up hey how's so-and-so how's this horse Love how's that it. horse she taught all three of my kids but it wasn't until last year that she started asking about the horses which Tremendous. has been exciting so bring people in welcome your friends the more the merrier here for my racehorse and head to the shop if you'd like to get any of that merchandise and moving forward to next year we did want to let you know we're going to be coming to you on a quarterly basis here for wire to wire i, I think we're going to end up having a two or three hour show by the time we slam together all of those celebrations and all of the races and the updates that you need to know but for now this is going to wrap things up for 2022 we'll see you again in march of next year for our next edition of wire to wire happy holidays happy new year it's been fun same to you christine it's been a truly a pleasure and a big thank you uh, to all of those out there in uh, my racehorse land who have made the dream a reality not only for yourselves for us and it truly has been a winning one happy holidays merry christmas and uh, look forward to seeing the winter circle next year hopefully the first day after christmas yes let's hope so happy new year happy holidays stay safe and healthy out there we'll see you out at the racetrack very very soon we'll see you back here for wire to wire 
next March. For the Sarge Neck Hines, I'm Christina Blacker from the FanDuel Studios here in Los Angeles. That wraps it up for Wire to Wire here for 2022.